Welcome in this evening to Bedford High School in Bedford, New Hampshire. This is Corey Munster Tiger with the BCTV crew. We have Division I lacrosse action here tonight with the host boys Bedford Bulldogs and the visiting Merrimack Tomahawks. Senior night tonight. Festivities have delayed us just a touch from the 6.30 start, but we're ready to go. 12 minutes are on the board. The teams are huddling up and we're just about ready for face-off. I am joined this evening by a longtime friend of mine and former Syracuse captain, Jay Abendroth, the head coach for one of the Bedford Cannons youth teams in town, and very happy to have you join me today, Jay. Appreciate that, Corey. Hello, uh, Bulldog Nation. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So we're also uh, pretty familiar with the head coach from the Merrimack Tomahawk side, Coach Brian Miller. He brings in a steady team this afternoon. I believe they are four and seven on the season so far. The Bulldogs come in with a six and five record after a tough loss on Monday night to the Bishop Girton Cardinals. They played a solid first half against the Cardinals, but unfortunately after a 10-0 run heading into the third quarter, things got away with, uh, got away from them on Monday evening. So the Bulldogs are looking to rebound tonight. See if they could chase down a few extra ground balls capitalize on their extra man opportunities and see if they can get things back in the right direction as they head into the last part of the season here. Teams are lining up at midfield right now as the traditional handshake of the goalies will happen in just a moment. Some chirping from the fans. Again, it's senior night here tonight. Congratulations again on all the hard work to the six seniors honored here this evening. Attackman Elijah Gregson, Midfielder Joe Michael, defenseman Parker Henrichon, midfielder Andrew McGee, goalie Matt Desmond, and midfielder Josh Beaton. Those six seniors have put in a lot of time and effort over the years and are seeing a great evening and a great season so far. They've had some really tight contests throughout. And we're ready to go at the faceoff. Dalton Roberto. Faces off against Jackson Forbes. Forbes comes away with the initial ground ball. He's forced out of bounds. And I believe he stepped out before he chucked it back in towards the Bedford defensive end. So Bulldogs will pick that up and head into the offensive end. Sean Toscano decides to go back. Sheridan now, cross field to Henrichon. That's Parker Henrichon to his brother, Spencer. Trots it in, gets a touch. And now they'll wheel it behind. Patient offense to start. Tomahawks are in a man-to-man -man defense. The Bulldogs will look to get going. Zach Griffin now. Guarded closely there by Maverick Landry. And now behind, Nick McCarthy. And Romello Hyde will look after Freshman Luke Purnell, now back up top, Toscano, drives hard, gets to his right, can't get the shot off as the ball pops out. Loose ball behind. Chase down, and it does go out of bounds off of Romello Hyde, so the Bulldogs will bring it in from X. I'll tell you, Corey, uh, senior night, a little bit of extra energy. Uh, the Bulldogs have done well riding, getting the ball back, you know, play, making the easy pay, plays uh, to continue on some of this uh, momentum. Feel good about playing in front of your family. They have pretty much had possession since the faceoff. Shot here is saved by Alex Griffin. Outlet pass, and Tomahawks are getting up the field. Shea Goodwin now trots into the offensive end. Dish, one more, four on three break. Picture perfect, and it ends in a goal. Nice play there by Kyle Dunn. Lefty attackman spins away from pressure and cashes in. And the Tomahawks go up 1-0. Good patience, good man. Uh, man up opportunity, excuse me, fast break opportunity for the Tomahawks. Really moved the ball well. Got the easy, uh, easy shot. Sure did. Matthew Todd on the look across the crease there, and Kyle Dunn was able to finish. Kyle Dunn, assist number five, Matthew Todd. So 1-0 Tomahawks. Merrimack T 
team coming in and sparking that first offensive flame there on the four on three break. And they take a 1-0 lead two minutes into the game. Good win now, passes behind. Matt Todd will, I'm sorry, that's Kyle Dunn. We'll pass to Matt Todd. They'll set up their offensive set. They look side, link inside to the crease. Can't quite complete the pass to Goodwin. Ball's on the ground and now back to Desmond. He'll outlet to his right. Nice collapse on that feed into the middle by the Bedford defense. Getting the clear here. Beaton receives that pass. Trots it into the offensive end. And now Toscano will settle things down. Beaton trots off. Short stick defender throughout the years. Had a great season. Again, he's a senior. He'll be pursuing his education at UNH next year. Griffin here will have a rip. Throws it into one of the defenders. So it doesn't quite get to the, to the cage. They're going to call that out of bounds off of Bedford. And Camden Wheeler will pick it up for the Tomahawks. Looks up in the middle, bounces a pass to his midfielder. Loose ball right in the middle. Scramble there, and away with it comes Trent Jackson. His pass goes into the ground, but now Jackson Forbes is able to corral it. Bedford, Bedford has done a nice job creating unsettled situations, getting the ball on the ground. Unfortunately, that one didn't go their way, but they've done a nice job getting their stick in the passing lanes. Sticks in lanes, sticks on sticks, and trying to get that ball on the carpet, get those loose ball situations, those 50-50 balls are really where the hustle comes out, where you can distinguish yourself. Pass here deflects off and will be an over and back, but they don't call it for some reason. Oh, actually, the ball didn't go over half field. The long stick made a nice play to keep it from coming over the 50, so the Tomahawks do keep possession. Ball here is on the ground. Henrichon trying to get it going his way. And Griffin finally comes up with it. Little swim move. Gets hacked from behind. No flag there. Ooh, looked like his foot stepped Ooh. on the line there. Home crowd. Home, home, <laughs> home team reps. <laughs> Little home brew. And Daldo behind. Throws a fake on Nick McCarthy. Rolls high side. Lefty. Ooh, Ooh he gets cleaned out. But flags do rain down on the field. And that will get blown dead. Nice quick spin by Daldo. Got in front of, got up top side on his, on his guy. Uh, Tom Ox came and cleaned him up, but uh, good opportunity for, him, for them on a man up play. So Camden Wheeler will trot to the sideline and feel shame in the box. He takes a knee as he came through. The senior defenseman literally clocked Tyler Daldo. Pretty good hit, but it was flagged for unnecessary roughness. A minute will go on the board and the extra man offense will come out for the Bulldogs. So Purnell will start things off from X. Looks like they're locking off Griffin on the far side. Toscano bounces one, it goes high and away. But they back it up. Backing it up again on a shot. The player who is closest to the ball when it went out, where it went out, is awarded possession specifically on a shot. That is somewhat subjective from an official standpoint. However, it's usually fairly obvious. Nice pass inside, and that results in a goal. Yeah, inside to Gregson. Gets the finish right on the crease, and the Bulldogs have tied it up. Very nice ball movement by the Bulldogs, getting it around, uh, resulting in a pretty easy uh, draw and dump into the crease there. Nice work. So 1-1, one, one, the Bulldogs tie it up. Senior Eli Gregson Cashes in on the crease on the man up. Bedford goal by number two, Eli Gregson. Gregson again, the senior here, got the start and now has a pleasant way to start off the evening. He'll be pursuing his education at Embry Riddle. Good luck to him in his aeronautical engineering pursuits. Good fallback if lacrosse doesn't work. Yeah, yeah not too bad. 
pass here. It was a little wide. Tomahawks scoop it out to themselves, and Matt Todd comes up with the Lucy. Kick it back high, and the Tomahawks will settle. That's Connor Dunn behind now. Get a rotation. He looks to go inside. This is Matt Todd. Now up top to Alec Vitri. Looks to get some space with that right hand, but runs into trouble. Bulldogs have bounced into this zone defense. They were playing this quite frequently throughout the game against VG on Monday and saw some success. They're relying on Matt Desmond, the senior captain goalkeeper, to stop shots like that from the outside. And Desmond has held the fort strong. Yeah, they're doing a nice job passing guys along, uh, you know, staying in their zones. That was a, a good outside shot to give up. Goalie had it read the whole way. Goodwin now looks to draw. And the defenders pass him off from zone to zone. This is Connor Dunn now, near side. Good stick. Good, good bat down there. It's Brian Riccio getting the ball on the carpet and now away with it comes Joe Michael. Turns on the Jets. He looks like the quarterback that he is but his pass goes out of bounds and it will be Tomahawk's ball. Good idea. Defense closed on him pretty quick. Had the, uh, the goal line extended pass, but uh, good work to, on the Tomahawks to shut that down. So Griffin outlets near side into the midfield. They find Alex v Alec Vitri. And now behind to Matt Todd again. Todd back to Vitri. Bulldogs are content to just hang out on defense. They're not really, you know, Pressing out, not really pressuring the ball. Letting the Tomahawks make the mistake. Yeah, this is where we'll see uh, what the Tomahawks have as far as uh, adjustments to a zone, right? The plays they can run, get some movement. Shot here by Goodwin off the mark. I know Coach Miller has a couple of tricks up his sleeve. but We'll see what happens here as they play out in the offensive end. Sullivan now, far side to Forbes, and then again behind to Dunn. Dunn drives righty, back to his preferred left. Bedford's doing a nice job keeping the ball out of the middle, keeping it on the outside. And the Tomahawks really aren't really putting too many people on that crease either. Maybe one kind of filtering through. No, they're not. Pass goes astray here. Man ball, and Hadley's able to avoid any body contact. Gets it back to Desmond, and now near side to Henrichon. Back to Hadley, who made the original play. Good hustle by Nick Hadley. Long stick midfielder. The junior dishes it off to his classmate, Sean Toscano. 3.30 to go here in the first quarter. It's 1-1. The Bulldogs have done a nice job clearing the ball today. That's always an important part of the game. They can go awry, but they've done a really nice job getting it over and getting it settled and get the right people on the, on the field. All goes back to stick skills, catching and throwing, taking care of the ball. You got it. Limiting turnovers. Griffin now gets the edge. Shot save. Great save there by Alex Griffin. Ball bounces wide, and Romello Hyde will take off on the clear. Runs through a few checks. Still running. He goes all the way behind. Gets it far side to Kyle Dunn, who will settle. Although he doesn't, that ball goes off of his midfielder's stick. And now going the other way is Kerr. Tristan Kerr. Now his pass gets batted. Now this is the sloppiness that we were just talking about. Bedford was doing a nice job of keeping out of their game. And now Cam Wheeler will go for a a trot downfield. Ball's on the ground again. Now Joe Michael finds it. Stick pops out, or excuse me, the ball pops out though. And Wheeler picks it up. And Coach Miller has seen enough of that ugliness and will call, call a timeout with 2.13 to go in the first quarter. Your score is one to one. Timeout, Fairbanks. 
Yeah, it's exciting to see the end to end, but uh, if you're a coach, you really need to uh, slow that down a little bit, give your kids a little bit of a breather, get a play in there so you can get a good possession here to uh, perhaps go ahead. Sure, and we've seen the evolution of the game, too, with long sticks becoming more and more involved in the offensive sets, especially in the fast break type situations. If you have the stick, if you have the handle, and you can press it, sure, go ahead. However, if you don't, and you're going to run around behind the cage and look to dish it as quickly as possible, you might get in trouble pretty quickly. That's absolutely right. Uh, a lot of the guys at the, at the next level uh, have really morphed a long stick, short stick. It really doesn't matter. They've got such in incredible stick skills at the highest level uh, that their coaches give them the green light. That's what you want when you're a long stick, the green light. <laughs> Spoken like a true long stick midfielder right there. <laughs> You want to stand, you know, 10 to 12 yards and get time and space so you can crank and pick an upper 90, right? That's right. Just don't check us. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we check you. Fair enough. So time out here by Coach Miller. Wants to preserve that possession as there were several ground balls in a row. He had seen enough of the sloppy play. Chooses to... Burn one of his two timeouts here with 2.13 to go in the first. Teams are breaking their huddles now. And we'll see if Coach Miller has anything up his sleeve for an offensive set. The girls lacrosse program is playing down at Nashua in Stello Stadium this evening. They are taking on the Bishop Girton Cardinals in a matchup of two undefeated girls division one teams tonight. Early play had them down 3-2, I believe, was the score early. I haven't seen an update recently, but we'll try to provide some updates throughout the broadcast. Teams are back. And Dunn will bring it in from behind. He's guarded by Sheridan. Back up top to Forbes, and now near side to Vitri. Looks Mike. like they're still in that zone there, Corey. They sure are. Ball squirts free on the missed pass, and Desmond will look to clear the ball here. As a defenseman, I always hated playing zone. I much prefer to play a man-to-man. -man. But as a team, and depending on who you're playing, it could be the right strategy. That's absolutely right. It, uh, it's a wrinkle, right? A lot of teams are ready to play one-on-one, -on -one, you know, being able to beat your guy, shoot, score. But with the zone, you have to have a, a different set of plays to run to really move the defense and get yourself open. You can't just go one-on-one. -on -one. And that wrinkle usually causes offensive teams to stutter, right? They're used to playing offense against a man-to-man. -man. They're used to their sets, and they're used to their, their way of performing a specific play here and there. But against the zone, it, it's all different. That's right. Well, most people know Syracuse for lacrosse, of course. They also have a basketball team <laughs> who is uh, pretty famous for running the zone. And, uh, you know, it's a different way. It's, it's harder to prepare if your team yourself can't uh, mimic that in the practice field. The Amoeba defense. Pass here out front. Daldo back up top. Colton Poole will have a go. Decides to pull it back out. Now Griffin, ball gets checked out of his stick. Nice play there. That was Maverick Landry on that check. Got the ball on the carpet, and now Trent Jackson is on the run for the clear. Looked like we could have had an offside penalty there, but no flag thrown. Shot here is wide by Vitri. Chased down behind by Dunn. Nice job by the Tomahawks, getting it over, taking advantage of the unsettled situation and getting a pretty decent so uh, shot off. Actually really like the pattern of play there where they got it behind and then worked back out front for the shot from up top again. Near side, shot, save. Desmond saw it the whole way, now chucks it down the field with only two seconds left in the quarter and that falls harmlessly to the right of Alex Griffin. But as we end the first quarter, we have a tie ball game here. The host Bulldogs and the visiting Tomahawks are knotted at one. Again, congratulations to the seniors here tonight. On senior night, six seniors filling out the that class, that leading class, the leadership of this team throughout the season. 
What do you think the coaches are talking about, Corey, right now? I would say on the Bedford side, a little sloppiness, right? Let's take care of the ball a little bit. Let's be sure of our passes. Let's get a couple looks. On the Tomahawk side, I'm thinking Coach Miller's pretty happy with that first quarter. They had some really solid looks on the cage. They're, he's going to try to have to figure out how he wants to approach this zone, right? Uh, frequently, when the zone gets tired, they start ball watching. So you're going to have some off-ball cuts, perhaps some skip passes to find folks with time and space. And the Bulldogs are going to have to rely on, on Matt Desmond in the goal, as they have all season, to stop some of those outside shots from you know, 12 to 14 yards with time and space. Yeah, absolutely. I think both teams need to clean it up a bit, be able to connect those passes. However, um, if you're the, the Bulldogs, I think you like those unsettled situations. You're doing a, doing a pretty good job creating a little bit of chaos, getting the ball uh, and getting it down to your end. And if you're the Tomahawks, I think you want to stay out of those uh, because they've done a really nice job um, picking their spots, right, working their way into uh, pretty easy. Uh, their one goal was right from the crease, a couple good shots uh, from up inside. So a little bit of patience on their side would do them well. And we haven't really seen the Bulldogs test the goalie yet. We've seen Alex Griffin come up with a couple of loose balls in near the crease, but we haven't really seen him tested on solid shots, either dodging from the midfield, dodging from behind, dodging from the wing. None of these shots are really testing him and his goalie ability. So we'll see if they make some adjustments here as we head into the second quarter. Roberto again will come out, take the face off for the Bulldogs. I believe that's Jackson Forbes for the Tomahawks. It is. Whistle blows. Still tied up. Roberto gets it going into the offensive end. Ball's picked up, but then falls out. Ooh. Flag was thrown. I'm not quite sure what that was. I think they'll get him with a push from behind with possession which is a very surprising call, especially considering that Cam Wheeler did not fall down. It's an unusual call that you get a penalty on a play where the player doesn't fall, especially on the push from behind. Now, and that is what's gonna get called. Nick Hadley will go in the box and feel shame. And the Bulldogs will see their first man down situation. Yeah, we'll see what the Tomahawks come out with a, with a man-up play. I tell you, sometimes when you get into that zone and you're really not breaking in, you may want to bring out your, your man-up plays as well uh, to really create some, some movement on the defensive side. We'll see what they have here. So the Tomahawks come out in their man-up. Penalty is on Beaton, not Hadley. Apologize to Nick Hadley. I didn't mean to consider you as such a ruffian. It's much more appropriate for Josh Beaton to be taken in the uh, Tomahawks will move it around in their offensive set. Dump down, misses, and that will travel out of bounds. So Joe Michael will pick it up. Good defense there but from Bedford. A little bit of an unforced error. Oftentimes you don't want to be dodging on a man up. You want to move the ball. Joe Michael turns on the Jets. And that's all he needed. The human clear. In this case, with the man down situation, the Bulldogs are trying what they can to not slide, right? Not change position on defense. And they were able to do so and force the turnover. So now the Bedford attack will try to run out that penalty. It's only a 30 second foul. So we should see six on six lacrosse here in just a second. Looks like the Tomahawks gave up an opportunity to double the ball, though, Corey. Usually, when you're man up and uh, the other team has the ball, you have that opportunity to send your free person out to go hunting. You sure do. Frequently, I've seen throughout this season is when they try to double that ball, they usually give up a goal. It's very odd. You're overextending, trying to double, and then two guys get beat, and you have a man up or an odd man on the backside. So there's a test from Zach Griffin. Misses the cage. But you're absolutely right. When you, you have a six on five, why not double? Why not go hard, try to get that ball on the ground? Purnell behind to Gregson. And now Toscano 
Draws the long stick. That's Joey Lawrence. Ball pops out. And out with it comes Romello Hyde. He's on the break. He's going to have a four on three. Moves it to his point. Down low, and he misses the pass. Matt Todd couldn't quite come up with it, and Desmond comes away with the ground ball. Near side to Parker Henrichon. He looks in the middle and finds Sean Toscano. Unsettled situation, but no numbers, and so they will settle things down. Really nice defense on that fast break from Bedford. Got around, uh, made their rotations, and forced an error. A bad pass, errant pass that they were able to t scoop up and clear. Toscano draws the short stick this time. Looking to go. Draws the double quickly. And they move it behind. Purnell now. Maintaining patience. Eight and a half to go here in the first half. 1-1 one, one is your score. Time of possession has really been in the Bedford Bulldogs' favor here as they make a turnover, ironically. Shea Goodwin comes out of the pack here and another four on three. Looking back, it was actually a great give and go there, but Goodwin wasn't looking for it. And it turns into another turnover. Yeah, the unsloppiness has uh, followed both teams from the first quarter here. We're gonna see if which one uh, can rein that in faster. We'll probably have a pretty decided advantage. Far side now, Tristan Carr. Excuse me, Kerr. Roberto has the ball knocked out. Great check there. Maverick Landry. Goes for the ding dong. Can't quite get it going. Now Gregson. Purnell looks for a cut. Ball's tipped. Good stick there. Yeah, very nice awareness. Getting your stick in the passing lane by the Tomahawks. Ryan Berge comes away with it this time. Runs away from pressure. That's, the ball just seems like it's not staying in people's sticks tonight. I'm not sure if you're seeing the same. We got a greaser out there, I think. Slippery <laughs> ball. Someone check that. Is it regulation? Greaser or, or tense hands, right? <laughs> I don't That's know. Right. That's right. Well, it is senior night. You know, the teams are excited to play in front of the families. Perhaps we'll chalk it up to that. Doubles there. Bergie's got to get out. He's drawing his man right to the ball. Far side now. Cole Deal. Ooh, hits pipe. Can't quite get it to go as it glanced off somebody in front. And now away with it comes Nick McCarthy. Another four on three. Fast break. Slide. Prevents the break from turning into anything. And now we have an illegal screen, I believe. Far side official calls an illegal pick. And that's another turnover. Griffin picks it up and is back towards the offensive end. Good roll dodge there. Oof. Ball just keeps popping out. Yeah, it really makes for a, uh, it, it's tough to get into your offensive sets, really, to get going in any type of rhythm if you can't get the ball around on both sides here. But I got to tell you, Corey, credit to the defenses who are really making them, you know, making the uh, offensive players work hard uh, to even get open passes. Bedford takes a timeout here, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's uh, the defense putting a little bit of pressure on there, sticks and gloves, making those adjacent passes less than comfortable. And it's leading to, like we see, tense hands. That's that's what I keep going back to. If your hands are tense and you're trying to catch that ball, guess what? It's going to glance off of the head. It's going to glance off of the stick in every possible situation. Yeah, we really haven't had a chance to see uh, the Tomahawks offense get the ball around uh, and credit the Bedford defense. And likewise, um, credit to the Tomahawks defense because they're really doing a great job on one-on-one. -on -one. They're not getting beat often. You know, once or twice they're getting by. But... If you're not getting beat, you're not causing the rest of your team to react and, uh, and rotate. And that's really, you know, probably one of their main reasons because of their one-on-one -on -one defense that they're still 1-1 one -one in this game because Bedford, Bedford has definitely uh, controlled uh, the, the tempo here. That goes back to the athleticism of the defense, keeping the bodies in front of them and preventing those odd man situations. Great observation there. Since that first quarter, no goals here in the second quarter. 6.24 to go in the half. 1-1 one to one is your score. The Sun, as it has been earlier this season, an issue 
is not tonight, as the game time start was at 6.30, about an hour after the normal game times for the varsity team. And the sun is a bit lower in the sky, so the shadows have cast over the entire field. Sun will not be a factor. Beautiful day here, though, in New Hampshire. 80s today, first time this year we've seen it tick above 80. And believe me, shorts and t-shirts were abound throughout town. Absolutely, lacrosse weather for sure. So 624 here in the first half, teams are back out. And the first pass looking behind was picked off marvelously by Romello, but a turnover here leads to a goal. One for one on the pickoffs. Again, sloppy play, but uh, Bedford was able to capitalize. Um, you know, there's uh, there's something these coaches all both have to talk to their team at halftime or whenever they get into the next timeout is uh, they're giving up a lot of possessions, a lot of opportunities just by, uh, by simple passes going awry. Great pick there by Cole Deal. Comes up with it out of the air and puts Bedford ahead 2-1. So as they come out from that timeout, they make a bad pass and then get a break on a pick. And the Bulldogs go up 2-1. 6.14 to go in the second. Back to the faceoff. We're going to have a procedure here. I believe the officials thought that Roberto was withholding, meaning he stayed on top of the ball for too long. He had it clamped on the backside of his stick for too long on the ground and was trying to control possession to drag it out to one of his wing teammates. If you keep that stick on top of the ball too long, they will call the withholding. Let's see if the Tomahawks can get a good possession here. You see them starting to get the ball around, which is a good start. Now they got to start moving the defenders or, or win some one-on-one -on -one battles. Todd behind now. Vitri was looking to go on that far wing, but good defense by Luke Sai. Shot here, score! Shea Goodwin from Kyle Dunn. Definitely a breakdown on the Bedford defense where the slide came, trying to help out the dodging, uh, def or the Dodger, and uh, left a guy right, wide open in the middle there. Uh, you always want to want to slide from you know inside out. However, you got to make sure you're not uh, taking away a hard shot, but giving up a very easy shot, as they did there. So just about 30 seconds later, the Tomahawks come back and get a goal inside from Goodwin, and we're knotted at two. Back to the faceoff. Roberto, again against Jackson Forbes. Forbes come, comes away with the ground ball. Beaton tries to push him out, can't get it to go. Got a good stick on for a check, but the ball pops directly into Alec Vitri's stick. So the Tomahawks will settle get their offensive substitutions on the field and look for a way to attack this zone defense for the Bulldogs. If I'm Coach Miller, I'm going to want them to get it behind again. They've had some success getting it behind and dumping as Bedford uh, goes and starts to crash the ball. Fortunately, they didn't get it that uh, there with another turnover. They did get the ball out. Sheridan had it in his stick momentarily, but it pops out on an excellent ride by the Tomahawks. Tomahawks are back on the offense. Ooh, wow, flag comes out. They're going to call push from behind with possession. <clears throat> Tough call there as Matt Todd was cycling through the middle there. Got some body contact, and the far side official threw his hanky. There it is, though. Good things are happening when the Tomahawks are coming from behind. Uh, I feel like when the ball's in front of the cage, the Bedford defense is doing a really nice job keeping it in front of them, keeping everything in their zones. When it's coming from behind, it seems to be giving them a bit of a problem figuring out who's got the ball, and we saw them collapse there. A little bit of a push in the back, and uh, Tomahawks get a man-up opportunity. The next thing you're going to want to see here is from those dodges is looking for cutters on the backside, right? As you, as you, you know, attract attention from two and three players on the defense, guess what? Somebody's going to be open. So if Matt Todd keeps his head up, finds those cutters, you're going to have better opportunities. So Tom Hawks on the extra man now. Far side, now up top. 
And behind again. They're setting up a play and looking for cutters. Good one here. Decides to pull it down as Sheridan was right there on the defense. Penalty is released. They find inside. Blocked in front. Looked like it caught a defender in the shins. Boy, that always feels good. But the Tomahawks come away with it and continue their offensive possession. Good win again. Can't get the shot off. Pass inside is a stray. And the Tomahawks remain patient. Bedford did a really nice job um, moving with the Tomahawks offense as they went from a 2-3-1 to a 3-3 uh, on that man down. We're successful in, uh, in, in burning it off. We'll see how they do on man-to-man -man defense now as the Tomahawks definitely have some patience and are bringing the ball from behind to try to create. Vitri defended well. Now that 2-3-1 and the 3-3 is the, the shape of formation for the offense. Shot here is bounced high over Desmond's head. You start from the midfield and count down. So two midfielders up top, three around five yards in front of the goal, and then one behind. Or a 3-3, as you were mentioning, usually is a great formation on a man up as you get all of your players above goal line extended and in shooting position. Back up top. Far side to Forbes now. Patient offense here by the Tomahawks. Just over two and a half to go in the first half. 2-2 two -two is your score. Looks like the Tomahawks are starting to extend that zone on the uh, goal line extended. Oof. Unforced error. Unforced error. Bounces at the attackman's feet. That's tough to corral. And the Bulldogs will take possession. We'll look for a clear. Henrichon up top off of Riccio's stick. He's able to gather that ground ball quickly, though. And now Purnell gets it in the offensive box. And Coach Joe Hansmeyer will take a timeout. 2-12 to go in the first half. 2-2 is your score. Timeout, Bedford. Great to think there on that clear. Uh, young freshman Brian Riccio was uh, in eighth grade last year. I was coaching him. Uh, moving along, so it's nice to see the freshman having an opportunity, along with Luke Purnell, to get onto the uh, get onto the field here for Bedford. It's great stuff. That freshman Brian Riccio has been contributing all season at that long stick midfield position, stirring things up, getting ground balls, making some great takeaway checks. Great to see the freshman contributing. Quick score update from Nashua: not so great for Bedford Nation. The Bishop Girton Cardinals lead 11-4 with 13 minutes left. I believe in the second half, that game did start a bit early. So 11-4, Cardinals down in Nashua at Stelos. So thus far, not a lot of offense. I mean, 2-2 at nearly halftime. You know, we're used to seeing scores in the 12, 13, 15 range. That's not the projection right now for this game. No, you would take the under for sure if you're getting the uh, <laughs> Vegas odds here. Uh, you know, again, I think we're just still waiting for both of the teams to settle down a bit, um, especially Bedford, right? They really need to uh, – they're doing some good things, you know, hustling, but uh, not connecting on those those passes they need to connect to really move the defense and, and get some decent shots and see what they have here. Did, did you happen to notice the over-under on DraftKings on the way over here or no? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I knew I was uh, announcing, so I didn't want to oh. – uh, Good choice. You know, yeah, I nope. had to recuse myself from that. No Pete Rose, right? That's right, exactly. Fair enough. So back it goes into the Bedford Bulldog stick near side. Sean Toscano will take a run. He's guarded by Shea Goodwin. Overplaying his right hand. Toscano measures him up. Stutter steps, get to his right. Behind to Purnell. Near side to Luke Carr. Carr back up top to Daldo. Far side, Griffin. Griffin takes a run. Draws a double. Moves it behind. Good patience here by the Bulldogs. Griffin now takes a shot outside. Misses wide. 
but it's backed up near side by the Bulldogs. Luke Carr will bring it in. We saw something a little different off of that timeout. The Bulldogs went into a 1-4-1, really trying to dodge from up top and then have some cutters. Uh, the Tomahawks did a nice job um, defending that and uh, adapting. As the Tomahawks are sliding early, Griffin shot save. Alex Griffin tracked it the whole way. Griffin on Griffin save. And the Tomahawks are out in transition. Shea Goodwin will settle. Perhaps look for a last shot, but I believe we have a timeout first. So just over a minute to go in the first half. 2-2 two -two is your score. The Tomahawks take a timeout. Yeah, that 1-4 is really effective. If you're getting those early slides, you have those two inside cutters right on the crease. As long as they're staying active, popping off, following their man, whoever doubles, that offensive player needs to follow that double to make sure that they're available for the dish. Yeah, and it's one of these things where coming off of a timeout, um, you know, the goals aren't coming organically, just letting them run up and down. So I think each of the coaches wants an opportunity to try to throw in a little wrinkle, throw in something different to maybe uh, – surprise the defense and it's uh, the Tomahawks turn here to see what they can come out with. Maybe uh, get a get a late second uh, quarter score to go up by one. Do these offensive possessions have you screaming for a shot clock right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Actually, I want to, you know, we'll get them all at halftime. We'll get them on a wall, <laughs> get them passing and catching, you know, get some reps in. So the college level has moved to a shot clock, as many of you lacrosse fans know out there. They have not implemented that at the high school level, but it has improved the flow of the game at the next level. It's very much uh, an enjoyable sport to watch, and it takes away those old Princeton offense days of spreading it out, boring the heck out of everybody in the stands and at home watching. It was highly effective, but frustratingly boring. So that shot clock has been a great evolution in the, in the college game to make it the upbeat, fast, Fastest game on two feet, you if you will, as lacrosse players know far and wide. Uh, and it has vastly improved the college sport. It absolutely has. I mean, as frustrating as it was to, to watch those Princeton games, it was worse to be on the field because it's like they're <laughs> playing keep away. Um, but, I, but I do think that uh, the shot clock has been, because uh, I was actually playing when it was being introduced. And there were some people that said it wasn't going to work. But uh, NCAA and uh, the rest of the, you know, rest of the powers that be have really done a nice job incorporating into the game. And I will say the last one is the PLL is also continuing to push that along. So go watch your local PLL teams. They're really bringing the game to another level. Oof, frustrating turnover here for Coach Miller. Coming right out of a timeout, second pass, sails out of bounds. And now Josh Beaton will look to clear. Runs through a few dodges, gets it into the offensive end. No timeouts left for either team, and senior Josh Beaton takes a shot, won't go. Bounces far and wide, but not a bad go by Josh Beaton there. The human clear. You always need one of those on your team. <laughs> Had a head of steam, and nobody was stopping him. And now with 30 seconds to go, the Bulldogs have another opportunity. A little shake and shiver there. They look inside. They had the pass, but... Can't make the connection. We get a push from behind. Call on the near side. And they're going to huddle up because they're not quite sure. The officials are on the same page. 21 seconds to go in the half. And the officials want to get each other straight. So ball is for Bedford. I believe there was a push from behind there as, as I saw it. But everybody thought the Tomahawks were going to gain possession here. I tell you, it was a really nice move one-on-one -on -one to, to create that uh, opportunity. Let's see if Beck Bedford can do it again. Toscano behind to Purnell. Purnell dishes up top. Can't make the connection with Luke Carr, who is cutting. And we have an over and back. 6.5 seconds to go in the first half. They pick it up near side. Kyle Dunn is likely going to go hard. Pass in front. Shot saved. Great save on the doorstep by Matt Desmond. Saving what could have put the Tomahawks up by a goal at halftime. So we will head into the break. 2-2 two -two is the score. A defensive struggle here at Bedford High School this evening on senior night. We will join you in about another, another 10 minutes with a scoring recap that won't take very long. 
but we will rejoin you shortly. Welcome back to Bedford, New Hampshire. Watching Division One lacrosse action between the host Bedford Bulldogs and the visiting Merrimack Tomahawks. Quick score update from the girls game down in Nashua. They trail 11-6, so they've pulled it back a little bit by two goals. There are only two and a half minutes to play at Stello Stadium. So it looks like the girls will suffer their first loss of the season. Still a stellar season so far. And on the face-off here, the Bulldogs get a chance right away. But Griffin, Alex Griffin, comes up with a save. Ball's batted away now. We're back into the thick of things. The score is 2-2 at halftime. And uh, I guess we didn't come back on early enough to talk about scoring summary here, but it is 2-2. And up and down action quickly here, and the Tomahawks come out with a goal. Jackson Forbes buries one in transition. Again, they move it behind, look for cutters from up top, and Forbes gets a step down and puts it behind Desmond for the lead. I tell you, we got to give one to both of the coaches. That was a very different uh, start uh, to the half than what we saw in the first. It started out with a really nice ground ball from the wing from Bedford. Really, really good shot in uh, transition. And then uh, Merrimack was able to turn it around, get down, clear, and uh, capitalize on an unsettled situation. Plus one for the coaches. So a drastically different attitude from both teams coming out here. We're looking for up and down play. Beaton comes up with the ground ball on the faceoff. Gets ahead of steam going. Steps it into the offensive end. Now looks back to Roberto. So how we got here, Bulldogs have goals by Gregson and Deal. The Tomahawks have goals by Dunn and Goodwin in the first half, and now Forbes to start the second half. And it is 3-2. The visiting Tomahawks hold a one-goal advantage. Toscano looks to go now, gets doubled quickly. Looks for cutters, finds one. Ball is stopped right on the doorstep. Yeah, that was a great save by the uh, Tomahawks goalie. Really nice cross-crease look uh, from Bedford. Everything you wanted to do, but the goalie came up big, made the stop. So the Tomahawks take possession down in their offensive end. I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen Derek Kaliza tonight. I'm not sure if there's an injury or not. This usual starting sophomore attackman has not seen the field. So wondering if there is an issue there. Good double team here. Ball is tipped by Sheridan, finds the stick of Kyle Dunn coming from behind and then chased down by Parker Henrichon on outstanding hustle by the senior. Absolutely a great hustle play. Really can change the momentum of a, of a quarter, little plays like that. Henrichon on the clear now. Far side to Spencer Henrichon. He'll step over. They will look to settle things down on the offensive end. Near side to Gregson. And now Zach Griffin. Runs by his man. Dodges lefty, now pulls it out. They run away from him. He'll take a shot. It goes wide, though. Backed up behind by Daldo. Good idea, right? A little unsettled. The the defenders were going off and subbing out for the offensive team teammates. Uh, good good run. Um, nice work on the attackman here to, to follow it up and continue the possession. Griffin all of a sudden found himself free. As you mentioned, two defenders were there and then ran away. So good redodge by Griffin. Toscano now. Drives hard righty. His shot's high and wide. Alex Griffin holding strong in the cage there tonight. Has made a couple of good saves, but a lot of the shots have been high and wide or bounced over the net. Griffin now, great change of direction there. Pulls down, dodges a second, sees a cutter. Pass the Toscano is wide and will dribble out of bounds on the near side, but that, <laughs> Tomahawks are way off sides here. Okay, they do make the call. So 
BC was offside as he was down on the 45. Instead of staying appropriately so on the 50, the referee is a little late, but does make the right call. You never know, the sun's going down, they haven't turned on the lights, uh, you know, 50, 40. Anybody could make that mistake. This ball's not gonna go over, but it is picked up by defender Cam Wheeler. Wheeler gets double teamed, ball comes out. Kerr is there, trying to keep the ball on the carpet. Getting those 50-50 balls. And it's finally corralled by Resendez. Shot, no, no shot. Todd decides to pull it out. Now back up top to Shea Goodwin. Bedford's really sticking with that 3-3 uh, three, three zone. Uh, really daring the Tomahawks team to move the ball and, and create a play and create some openings. And there's the turnover they're looking for. Forced pass goes into the turf. Desmond comes up with the loose ball. Henry Sean on the clear now. That ball again pops out of sticks. Good check here on the hustle. Ball finally finds Desmond again. I'm surprised there's no failure to advance here yet. They must have restarted. They finally get it over half field. Luke Carr will step it into the offensive end. Now, I don't think that the Tomahawks had possession there, so that should have been a failure to advance, but no call. Absolutely. Goalie took a goalie uh, for Bedford, took it into his own hands and decided to be his own human clear. Stop watching the middies drop the ball. Quick turnover here for, for the t Bulldogs. Tomahawks are back on a four on three, can't make a connection. Sheridan looks to see the ball go out. Good hustle play by the Tomahawks. Jeez, I don't think that ball was out, but I'm a lot farther away than the nearest official. He blows his whistle and awards the Bulldogs the ball. Sheridan travels far side. We'll look to stay patient on the clear. Near side now with Spencer Henrichon. His pass to the cutter through the middle is awry. And Kyle Dunn gets popped by Beaton. Beaton's stick goes flying and the ball comes out and Luke Sai will pick it up. Good job by Beaton there. That could have been a really physical and unnecessary roughness type situation, but he made just enough contact. The ball came out. His stick went flying, but the ball came out too. Yeah, I tell you, Corey, this uh, sloppy play, a lot of the turnovers is really um, depriving Bedford of some good offensive uh, possessions up front and really keeping it a close game. Just over five minutes to go in the third. 3-2, Tomahawks lead. Pass offside again, does not make the connection. They were looking for Purnell on the cut through and Roberto's pass was too low. Romello Hyde now. Quick face dodge, puts that long stick out in one hand, turns on the Jets. Cutter now from up top, this is Jackson Forbes pass, excuse me, shot is wide, backed up behind by Matt Todd. We talked about time of possession in the first half. It seemed to be, we don't have official statistics on this, but it seemed to be in favor of the Bulldogs. Here in the second half, it seems to be more so favoring the Tomahawks as they've had several long possessions. Shot here goes off defenders in front. Chased down by Matt Todd again. And here's where the trouble with zones might come in too is, is players get a little tired and they're not as quick defending their own zone. Yeah, just like in a lot of other sports, you, sometimes you gotta hold the ball on offense to give your defense a little bit of a breather uh, after a long stint. And the Bedford offense just hasn't been able to keep possession long enough to uh, uh, give their defense a bit of a breather, a bit of a, bit of a break. Loose ball here corralled by Parker Henrichon. Pass to his brother Spencer Henrichon. Now up to the middle from Desmond to Luke Sai. They do clear it and then throw it right away. 
Some of the Bedford fans are getting a bit frustrated with some of these careless turnovers. Quick score update from Nashua at Stelos. The BG girls are triumphant over the Bedford Bulldogs. 12-7 is the final down there from Stelos. So as we thought with those two minutes remaining that Bedford was gonna suffer its first loss. And now we have a goal here by the Tomahawks. Jackson Forbes sneaks in on a pass from behind from Alec Vitri. Yeah, there, is, there it is again, Corey, coming from behind, really creating some open opportunities. It seems like Bedford uh, in that 3-3 zone is really not pinching in and helping out, cover off uh, the guys in the crease, and the Tomahawks are taking advantage. So the Tomahawks extend their lead out to two goals. This is, oddly, the largest lead we've seen tonight, 4-2. 3.38 to go in the third. A scoring bonanza, a blitz. <laughs> Forbes second of the night, second of the third quarter in fact. Goals also by Kyle Dunn and Shea Goodwin. Scrap here on the faceoff. Still on the ground. People can't quite come up with it. We have a flag thrown, and it must be on the Bulldogs as they don't blow it dead. Pass goes high and wide, and we will have a foul on the Bulldogs. Not quite sure. We do have a player down, too, holding his head. It looks like that's Ryan Resendez. He does get up. We'll probably have a high hit, and it looks to be Josh Beaton heading to the box for a one-minute foul. So an unnecessary roughness, high hit, one-minute foul. Beaton will go to the box and feel shame. He takes a knee, and the Tomahawks have an extra man situation with 3.04 left in the third. Here we are in the third, and the Tomahawks have really kind of taken control. It's uh, one of the best parts about lacrosse is uh, make it, take it off of a face-off. You run hard. You can get the uh, get into the offensive end and continue to apply pressure, which the Tomahawks are doing. And we saw that make it take it scenario play out in dramatic fashion on Monday with the dominant faceoff midfielder for Bishop Girton. James Murphy was nearly perfect at the faceoff X. Great play here on defense by Spencer Henrichon. Gets the ball out. And now the Bulldogs have a chance to kill off this penalty. Joe Michael now with possession. Takes a little shimmy and a little shake. A little swim move, another swim move. He gets over midfield. And they're gonna call a ward. They call a ward on Joe Michael. Ball finds Jackson Forbes quickly. Still a man up. Forbes moves it to Vitri. Back across. A good win. 2.15, about 10 seconds left in the penalty. Behind, Vitri. Now up top. Moving it quickly now. They get it to Dunn. He drives hard left. He shot is wide, though. They back it up, and we're back to six on six lacrosse. One fifty-eight to go in the third. 4-2 is the score. The Tomahawks hold the advantage. Bedford continues to struggle to get the ball out of their zone, giving the Tomahawks continued opportunities to, uh, to go at their defense. Sooner or later, Coach Johansmeyer is ne gonna need to get out and pressure this ball a bit more. Again, as time of possession heavily favors the Tomahawks here in the third quarter. Shot from up top, Desmond eats that up, offside high, right into his butterfly net. Luke Sai comes up with a great catch, but then throws it away. And so the Bulldogs, again, are having trouble valuing the possession when it does come into their offensive end. Yeah, this is the stuff that, that drives a coach nuts, is not being able to uh, give yourself a break. And it's the simple things. It's the passing and catching that Bedford's really struggling with right now. The defense works really hard to prevent goals. They come up with a great save. They clear the ball. And then when they get over midline, it trickles out of bounds. Vitri now. Back up top to Goodwin. Far side. 
It finds Dunn. And behind to Todd. He's chased, and the ball falls out of bounds. Spencer Henry Sean back there harassing. Actually didn't get any checks in. It was just a missed ground ball. But Henry Sean will bring it up in the middle. His pass to Luke Sai connects. Sai finds the pass here and score. Tyler Daldo on a long pass from about the 35 yard line from Luke Sai. And the Bulldogs pull back to within one. It's such a distinct difference when you're able to connect those passes and catches. Your talent, the rest of your talent, really comes out. Your ability to see the field, move the ball, uh, and finish. Uh, and we saw that on full display. Uh, good to see Bedford get a little bit of a back to, back to basics and see some good results. Sidearm ripper from Tyler Daldo, too, was able to find the back <laughs> of the cage. High and top right. Back to the faceoff X. Outstanding. Face off from Jackson Forbes. Popped and pushed it out to himself. And the Tomahawks get possession with just under 30 seconds to go in the third quarter and a one goal advantage. Roberto gets the ball down. Beaton looks to help. Away with it comes Justin Sullivan. A little help there. Again, the 3 3 defense, the zone defense. Keeping shooters outside. Save here, Desmond, on the outside shot by Vitri. Beaton comes up with the ground ball, but that'll do it for the third quarter. 4 3 is your score. The Tomahawks led that one 2 to 1 in goals, so they lead by a goal heading into the fourth. It kind of feels, Corey, like uh, whoever wins the faceoff battle in this fourth quarter will really have a, a big advantage and uh, you know could be the one taking the game. It's, uh, it's all about possession. Um, Tom Hawks really took it to Bedford there. Uh, credit to the goalie for really standing tall and keeping this a one-goal game. As he has done all season, Matt Desmond, the senior goalie, has come up huge. Again, Matt Desmond looks to continue his lacrosse career next year at Southern New Hampshire University where he has committed to attend next year. Senior night again tonight. We were honoring the six seniors for the Bedford Bulldogs. Again, Elijah Gregson will be attending Embry-Riddle in the fall. Joe Michael will play football at Fordham. Again, we've seen some of those elusive moves through the midfield as he's looked to clear the ball. Parker Henrichon will attend Colorado Andrew McGee will pursue his studies at Virginia Tech. We just talked about Matt Desmond, and Josh Beaton will be going to the University of New Hampshire. So Again, good luck to those six seniors as they continue their educational careers and some athletic careers in the next phase of their life. Yeah, congratulations to all of them and uh, all great schools to go to. i got to say, um, the two with uh, the New Hampshire uh, schools are sticking to their roots. There's nothing like being able to come home, get some home cooking, and drop off some, some laundry. So <laughs> smart kids there. But uh, congrats to all of them. Good stuff. We wish them the best. And we wish them the best here in the fourth quarter as 12 minutes are back on the board. They trail by one and have their work cut out for them. Their offense has been a little dismal here throughout the game. And they're going to need a spark here in the fourth quarter. As you talked about, it could come from this faceoff. Jackson Forbes was dominant on the last one. Clamped and pulled, pushed it out to himself. In this case, Roberto pops it out forward. But Shea Goodwin comes up with the ground ball. Tomahawks get it behind. The ball's on the ground, though. Spencer Henrichon doing what he can. And again, the Bulldogs' defense is staying patient here. They might need to extend this a bit. Great cut from behind and a goal. And that's the patience the Tomahawks were looking for as Kyle Dunn came from behind and puts the lead back out to two. Yeah, that Bulldog defense is doing a great job when the ball's in front of them, in front of the net. When it gets behind or the cutters are coming from behind, it's really, truly causing them some, some issues and some troubles. I think if you're the Bedford coach now, what you want to tell your team is just start at the beginning, right? Get this face off. Let's get the ball down. 
let's start with the, the basics. We've seen that they can get the ball in the net, uh, but it, they're going to need to go back to the the you know the wall ball stuff and uh, get the ball down, get it around, and get it into their offense's hands. Forbes pulls it out to his side. Goodwin comes up with the ground ball. Another win for the Tomahawks on the faceoff. Romello Hyde now kicks it into high gear, clears it, gets it behind. His pass was looking to be high, but falls safely into Matt Todd's stick. And the Tomahawks will settle and be patient with a two-goal lead. Hyde's really done a nice job from, uh, for the Tomahawks, the defender, clearing the ball today. Good handle, great legs, has found success in that clear. Shot here is a score. Connor done this time. Just yeah. squeaked open, had some time and space, and was able to rip offside hip on Desmond. Yeah, really nice job by the Tomahawks, getting the clear, getting it behind, being able to move it around and just take advantage, nothing fancy. Um, they're doing a nice job starting to control uh, this whole half, actually, as we get into the 10 minutes, 45 left in the fourth quarter. I missed the assist, too. The whoever had it before that had a nice dish cross, uh, across the formation. I think it was Jackson Forbes, but I don't quite recall who passed it near side to Connor Dunn, but the lefty pulled it down and ripped near side. Forbes now on the faceoff. Tristan Kerr finds the Hoover vacuum. Dishes to Joe Michael. Michael takes a check. Runs through another defender. He's doubled over there by the far side 30-yard line. Now dishes to Sean Toscano, who hasn't seen a lot of time here in the second half, as the Bulldogs have not been on offense very frequently. This top midfield line for the offense is going to need to get something going with a three-goal deficit. Toscano runs by, draws the double, pushes it behind. Near side, Purnell looks to rip, blocked in front by Hyde. Goalies love when their defenders eat those shots, soak it up nicely. Roberto comes away with the scrum there at the 25-yard line. Ooh, good cut inside there by Berge. Toscano couldn't quite get him. The ball looks to go in back inside, and that gets tipped by Nick McCarthy. Now Toscano comes away with it. His shot is wide, backed up behind by the Bulldogs, so they'll get another shot at it. Nine and a half to go in the game. Bulldogs trail by three, 6-3. Good hustle by the Bulldogs there, generating shots. However, they're starting to jam the ball in a little bit. I think they got to let the game come to them, you know, make the moves and not try to uh, force it into the middle. They really need to start peppering this goalie here. Their shots have all been wide of course, except for three, but those three that found the back of the net, other than that, they must have 15 shots or so that have all gone wide or high. Griffin now looks to pull his defender out. Little stutter step, looks for cutters. Backside had one. Couldn't quite see Gregson on the backside. Now Roberto looks to go, draws the double, rolls away, moves it. Toscano, stutter step, can't get the shot off. Gregson's pass is picked off. Again, Romello Hyde getting that stick out in the way, back up into transition. His pass finds the carpet, though, as Maverick Landry can't make the catch. Now Riccio defends, pulled down by Connor Dunn. I think from an offensive standpoint, Bedford's really, they're, they're dodging and the ball's dying in someone's stick, right? They're not really moving the ball and taking advantage of the mismatches they're creating with the dodge. It's uh, something I think they got to work on is keeping the ball hot, getting it around, finding the open guy. As soon as that double commits, that ball should be moving. There's got to be somebody open as attention is drawn to the ball carrier. His odd man situation should find an open stick with time and space to bury. Shot. Here goes wide and backed up behind by the Tomahawks. Just under eight minutes to go. They hold a 6-3 advantage over the Bulldogs. Goodwin now drives right. Pushes behind. 
Ball pops out. Good check there by Sheridan. Just a little poke and a slap, and that got the ball on the carpet. Henry Sean looks through the middle. Ball dribbles far side to Riccio. Colton Poole looks to settle. Even though the defense have let it, has let up four goals this half, they've really done a nice job, uh, you know, in, in light of all the sloppy play. Usually the, the, the passes, the sloppy passes will mean a lot of unsettled goals, but the defense is really keeping them in the game here for Bedford. S little sloppiness at midfield now as I believe they were offside. A trail official had the call and blew it dead, and it's a turnover. So the Tomahawks take over again. Near side to Justin Sullivan. Now done. You can see the confidence growing with the Tomahawks too as they continue to dominate time of possession. They're comfortable. If the Bulldogs are going to sit back in this zone, they're going to take all the time in the world that they want. Ball sneaks. Desmond with the save. Picked up on the doorstep. And we call that a garbage goal as Jackson Forbes is right there for the ground ball and cashes in, puts the Tomahawks up 7-3. to three. I think you said it, Corey. The uh, Tomahawks are really starting to settle in, and sometimes you make your own luck, right? You stay patient. You uh, do what you need to do, the fundamentals, and uh, the, the lacrosse gods give you a little bit of a, a gift there and a garbage goal. Forbes in great position right on the crease, kept his feet moving and was looking for that rebound. Desmond made the initial save. But the rebound popped out right into Forbes' stick. He was able to turn and fire and bury his third goal of the game. So three goals for Forbes leading the way. Kyle Dunn has two. Connor Dunn has one. And Goodwin has one. For the Bulldogs, it's Gregson, Deal, and Daldo for their three. 6.36 to go in the game. The Tomahawks have a four-goal lead. Yeah, and aside from that last possession down when Bedford had the ball on offense, I think that was the only time that uh, they've had it settled down there. I think uh, credit to the Tomahawks for taking advantage, finding the face-offs, right? It starts with the face-off X, and uh, being able to take advantage and keep the ball in possession because that is absolutely the difference in the game today is that uh, possession arrow. And it's been a, an amazing amount of patience on the offensive end for the Tomahawks. Coach Miller preaching that patient approach. Let's settle things down. If they're not going to come out and challenge us, we're going to hang out around the outside, keep possession, look for opportunities, and capitalize when we can. 6.36 to go in the game. The Bulldogs have a mountain to climb. But as you and I both know, in the game of lacrosse, goals can come very quickly. Looks like Sheridan will take the face off this time against Jackson Forbes. They put the long stick on the face off X, but we do have a procedure. I'm not sure what happened there, but the Tomahawks gained possession on a procedure call. Tell you the Bulldogs can't lose too many more of those. Uh those face-offs, they really need to turn this game around. It's got to start at that face-off X. Sheridan extending pressure now. He's on Goodwin. It looks like the Bulldogs have switched to a man-to-man -man defense. And this was probably needed a little bit earlier as they needed to extend out pressure. And you can see that they're out there pressuring, and it's looking like it's going to cause a turnover here as that ball glances off of Dunstick, and the Bulldogs will take possession with six minutes to go in the game. Up quick to Sheridan. Bounce pass, far side. Again, sloppiness. Away with the ball comes Nick McCarthy. Yeah, and that's hard for a team when you work so hard to get the ball on the ground, get possession, uh, to just give it away on that uh, clear. Really puts on the back foot. Uh, seems like the defense is, you know, seems like you're trying to push uphill uh, all the time. Smart timeout here by Coach Miller. 5.41 to go in the game. He saw his long stick getting in a little bit of trouble there. Nick McCarthy came over with the ball, attracted a crowd, and Coach Miller wanted to preserve that possession, so burns a timeout.
I started watching Formula One, Corey, and uh, I've learned a new term. It's uh, I would say that Bedford is on their back foot. On their back foot. Yes, right now. Now, how does that apply to Formula One? I don't know. <laughs> but I heard it on Formula okay. One. Okay. So okay. Made sense to me. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yes, they are certainly on their back foot. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how that would even apply. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm sure somebody will help us. <laughs> you know, all of the six fans that we have listening out there, maybe one of them is a Formula oh, One fan. Yes. Fa oh, so I'm sorry. We're getting <laughs> updated information from the BCTV crew. Bill Jennings is telling me there's over 10,000 viewers out there right now. Not official statistics. We're going to have to look at the data when we go back and figure out the uh, the click-throughs on BCTV. But I'm not sure they're listening, but they're... It might, it might, <laughs> That's right. It, it might top 20? I don't know. You guys tell me. Put it on the poll. <laughs> Do you know what the back foot means? 541 to go in the game. The Tomahawks look to be spoiling senior night here for the Bulldogs. They come out. The Bulldogs are in a man-to-man. -man, and they're going to need to extend pressure and try to get this ball going offensively in their zone. Kerr comes out. Resendez has possession. Gets the corner. Looks to dish, and he does. They find Matt Todd on the far side. Now it finds its way back up top to Alec Vitri. If I'm Coach Miller, I'm having my team take the air out of it, but that's not what happens. Vitri takes a shot. Popcorn save for Desmond. And now they look to clear. Yeah, Bedford really extended on that play. Locked off on the adjacents. Uh, and the person on the ball, the long stick on the ball, just went after the, the ball carrier. Um, Made, uh, made some good moves there. Uh, resulted in a pretty easy save for the goalie. And here he goes, romping off the uh, other side of the field. And as he's romping on the other side of the field, we get an offside call. Desmond hustles back. Wheeler finds Hyde. And now the Tomahawks will look to take some air out. Four and a half to go in the game. Double team near side, the ball comes out briefly. Jackson Forbes does a nice job of moving it along. You can see the Bedford Bulldog defenders are coming out aggressively. We have a failure to advance here. So another turnover, and the Bulldogs get the ball back in their sticks. Four and a half to go in the game. Again, the defense is doing their jobs, creating the turnovers. Let's see if the offense can bring it down and uh, get a good possession for the Bulldogs. They're going to need to start pressing here a bit. More so on the offensive side. They're going to need to get a at least one on the, on the scoreboard to get them going. And that's going to be offside too as nobody's staying back for him. There you go. Mental errors here by the Bulldogs. Turns it over again. Four minutes to go. Wheeler near side to Hyde. Hyde steps it in. Keeps going behind. His pass finds the ground. Hadley comes away with it. Ball's batted around. Squirts loose over to Spencer Henrichon. Cross field pass. Now they get it up the far sideline. Beaton runs through a check. Gets downhill. Runs through another check. Pulls it out. And finds Colton Poole on the far sideline. Poole looks to go. Challenges the defense. No go there, though. And his pass is wide for Purnell. Purnell keeps it in bounds. Good hustle. They're going to need more than hustle, though. They need some heroics. Zach Griffin looks to isolate. Gets downhill. Dodges righty. Spins behind Aldo, near side, Toscano. Dodges right, he can't get the shot off as he's checked and double teamed. Push from behind, will not get called, but that one sure will. And the Tomahawks will pick it up. 
Yeah, good defense by the Tomahawks. Really were able to collapse on the on the Dodger there, um, get the ball back, and here we go, clear with a couple flags down. I believe there was some chirping, and then there was definitely a slash, so two, two hankies are out. The defensive end for the Tomahawks is littered with laundry, but they will go on the man-up situation as Toscano picks up the loose ball. 2.20 to go in the game. The Tomahawks will go on the extra man. Likely only one person for a minute and a half, maybe two minutes based on a chirp. That would be an unsportsmanlike in a minute. So two personal fouls would basically take them to the end of the game. And it's looking more and more bleak for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it is. The uh, Tomahawks have the opportunity to really, as you said, take the uh, air out of the ball here. Let's see if Bedford can apply some pressure, perhaps uh, get a knockdown or create an unforced error. That's really what they have to get here with 2.20 left. Down by four. So you let them make maybe one or two passes, kind of lollygagging around the outside, then maybe put a three play on so you jump real hard on that third or fourth pass. That's right. Or you do things like you go shut off a guy, try to try to um, throw the offense off of their game a little bit, and then extend. Uh, you also, you know, don't forget you can use the goalie here in strategic areas. It's not necessarily like hockey, where you maybe have a little bit less of a, uh, you know, a little more time to get the the goalie off. But uh, the goalie is definitely a defender that you can employ here when you're man down and need the ball to press. Well, especially if, if they've practiced it and the ball goes behind, that goalie can jump out to the nearest offensive player near the crease, and then you effectively have a man-on-man, -man, a, a six on six with no goalie. Not necessarily the best if they turn the edge and get goal line extended and have a clear shot, but again, you're able to get that pressure, hopefully force a turnover. Yeah, they got to do something, though, with uh, only a little bit over two minutes left. Uh, Tomahawks definitely have a... Uh, the advantage here being man up. The officials continue to conference. I believe they're trying to figure out exactly time and situation. Colton Poole is taking a knee in the sin bin far side. So he certainly had the slash and I'm guessing that he was having a little bit of a loose mouth that drew the first penalty so we have 2.20 to go. We restart. And pressure gets applied quickly by Parker Henrichon behind. That's right. They're extending out, trying to uh, bat down a pass or create an unforced error. Tomahawks continue to move it. Handling the pressure for now. Kerr. Now back behind, they find Forbes really has been a key contributor for the Tomahawks this afternoon. Three goals, one assist. And here we see the goalie playing a little bit of a center field, if you will, in front of the goal while the ball's behind. Um, Good face dodge and a great save. Desmond keeps him in it. 90 seconds to go here as they continue to work the ball around the outside on this penalty. Tomahawks looking for shots, but not necessarily taking them. That pass goes far and wide. Hmm, not quite sure what the whistle was there, but the Bulldogs pick it up. Sheridan will stop right in front of the Bulldogs bench, and they'll take a timeout. 1.15 to go, yet a four-goal deficit. Unlike in the professional MLL, there are no two-point shots here in Division I high school lacrosse, so... Four goals in a minute 15, not impossible, but not likely. Not probable. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I think that was uh, when you get up by uh, a number of goals, less than two minutes, you have to keep it in the box, in the small restraining ah, box. Okay, and I think go. that uh, the Tomahawks uh, got out. And, and I tell you, that's what that's what you want when you pressure the ball. You want to get them to step out of the box, which is a uh, immediate turnover, or um, you know, drop the ball, force on uh, a pass that uh, goes awry. But uh, you're right with uh, – a minute 15, they need a whole lot more than just that to, to come level. So the Tomahawks step it out on that keep it in call. They turn it over. Sheridan picked it up, cleared it over to the 40-yard line. Coach Joe Hansmeyer takes the timeout. And he's going to need something quickly and then going to need some real help on that face-off X. 
I tell you, uh, goalie Matt Desmond has really done a nice job today. Um, despite being down, he's made a number of really you know, spectacular saves to try to keep his team in the game. That's why he does wear the C on his sweater to use a goalie, uh, excuse me, to use a hockey term. Has been showing that leadership all throughout the season, coming up with huge save after huge save. And honestly, as, as a defense, you keep a goal, a, a team under 10 goals in a game, you feel like you should have a good shot at winning the game. Score, of course, is 7-3 here. Bulldogs spread things out. They are still a man down, so it's a five on six situation here. Toscano moves the ball behind. Daldo moves it back up top. Stick in the passing lane there by Goodwin. Purnell chases down the loose ball. Hyde looks to dislodge it. Far side, now Toscano. Ball pops out of his stick. Unsettled situation. We're back to even strength, six on six lacrosse. And the ball is still squirting around there on the ground. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy with 35 seconds to play. Still on the ground, nobody coming out with it. Usually in this situation, we see some kind of push from behind, but the teams are maintaining some discipline. And finally, away with it comes Wheeler. His pass gets batted and it's back on the ground. We get a whistle. I think we had a little bit of uh, extracurriculars there. Uh, between Wheeler and um, Tyler Daldo. Okay. Didn't see much at all. They both head for the exits 15 seconds early, and substitutions will come on. Bulldogs will need to put an attackman back on. Fifteen seconds to go here in the game. 7-3 is your score, and the Tomahawks are going to come in here on senior night and hang a loss on the Bulldogs. Again, a great night from Jackson Forbes. Hat trick, one assist. You got helpers from Connor Dunn, Kyle Dunn, and Shea Goodwin all with one goal each. I'm sorry. Kyle Dunn had two, and the others had one goal each to round out the seven. The Bulldogs got goals from Gregson, Deal, and Daldo, but it wasn't nearly enough offense on senior night as Hyde travels over midfield, gets whacked a few times on the stick and on the gloves, but that's gonna do it here. As the Tomahawks take one from the Bulldogs on this beautiful Thursday night, not so beautiful for Coach Joe Hansmeyer and the Bulldogs. Final score, Any closing seven. thoughts there, Jay? No, I appreciate it, this was fun. Uh, tough, tough night for the, the Bulldogs. You can see how the little things, the passing, the catching, the ground balls can really change the momentum in a game. Uh, and uh, you know, I tell you, I give credit off to uh, Merrimack for really controlling that aspect and uh, the re final result showed their dominance. Coach Miller and the Tomahawks took a very patient approach on offense. We're solving that zone defense, took advantage of the opportunities that presented themselves and come away with victory tonight. So for Jay Abendroth, I appreciate the BCTV crew coming tonight. Bill Jennings on camera. Colleen Richardson, as usual, running the show. She always gives a smile for that. Jay Abendroth, appreciate you in the booth tonight. We will join you next time. Not sure what the schedule is, but we'll try to get back for at least one more game this season. If not for the boys, the girls will likely have a home playoff game that we should be able to carry for all those viewers out in Bedford lacrosse fandom. So for the entire crew here tonight, have a great night. We will join you on our next broadcast.